going to go back to excellent gentleman and an officer indeed and it's an honor to have him here helping to serve in this capacity so what we see now is we left off that Absalom had deposed his Abba and he did it by stealth he did it by shrewdness all he had to do or what he did do was he took 200 of the foremost citizens out of Jerusalem lied to his father said he was going to Hebron to make an offering in answer to a vow he made to the God of heaven and that was a good thing to say to his father because his father said well go right ahead go in peace my son but he had already arranged throughout all of the towns around the land that when you hear this certain call or this alarm by the trumpet or the horn or the shofar proclaim that Absalom is king <laughs> now that must sound like something suddenly everybody is saying Absalom is king long live the king long live Absalom king of all Israel and David packed up and left because he now caught on that this boy means to destroy my life what he claimed or pretended to be love and honor to his father was actually hatred and disrespect insolence David must now go through another ordeal because of the matter of Bathsheba and uh, Uriah. See, so even though we are loved by the Almighty God more than we could possibly love ourselves, sometimes there's a payment that got to be paid up. That balance has to be balanced out. All right. Let's start from... Mm -hmm. Let's start from 13. 2 Samuel 15, 13. We're in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there came a messenger to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise, and let us flee. For else none of us shall escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us quickly and bring down evil upon us and smite the city with the edge of the sword. That's the way he would come in, you know. If he has an inkling that David is still in there, he's going to come in with war. He's going to enter the city. That's the only way to come. Because he knows his offer is bad. That's it. So if he's still there, he has to take the city now. So David spares a lot of life, and also he's looking to his maker, remembering those words, the sword will never depart from thine house. That's right. So he says, well, let's leave before it brings evil. A lot of people die. So he marches out, let's go. And the king's servant said unto the king, behold, Thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall choose. And the king went forth, and all his household after him. And the king left ten women that were concubines to keep the house. And the king went forth, and all the people after him. And they tarried in Beit Marak. And all his servants passed on beside him. And all the Kerithites, and the Pelethites, and all the Gittites, six hundred men that came after him from God, Pass on before the king. Some of the people that he conquered really looked to him as a master. And they looked up to him as the anointed of God. And these are strangers and uh, what we would call the nations, going the heathens. But they were faithful to him. Certainly the Carathites and the uh, Pelethites, they were like a lifeguard around him. I think I mentioned it last time. If you tried to get to David, they would fillet you. They were so good with blades. They had, we are told by history, they used a certain dagger. I think this is the same group called Shakari. And that Shakari was sharp. And the people that used it were excellent swordsmen and men who deal death. 
So they, they were right on him to make sure nobody got to this person. The way people that came along with him, his servants and everyone who loved him was this. They went looking for the time when he would return in triumph. Right. Because David is the anointed. This other one now is a usurper. He might hold all the cards right now, but that's only temporary. Sometimes the people who hate us, and there are many of them, they are trying to usurp us, throw us down with any kind of device possible. Sometimes it's someone in the workplace looking to overthrow you, to shine you, or to get you thrown out. But whatever the case is, you hold fast. The way David and his servants are holding fast now, they're going out, but they are counting on the Almighty God to bring about victory at last. Let's read. Then said the king to Etai the Gittite, Wherefore goest thou also with us? Return and abide with the king, for thou art a foreigner, and also an exile from thy own place. Whereas thou camest but yesterday, should I this day make thee go up and down with us, seeing thou go whither I may? Return thou, and take back thy brethren with thee in kindness and truth. And Etai answered the king and said, As Jehovah liveth, as my lord the king liveth, Surely in what place my lord the king shall be, but if a death or for life, even there also will thy servant be. Sometimes a friend in the hand, a brother nearby, a good friend is better than gold right then. Now this one here, he's telling them, hey, you just got here yesterday. You just gave up eating swine last month. Why are you going to come follow me and suffer the privations that I must go through? He said, I will not go back. I'm down with you. It's such a beautiful thing to determination and loyalty. And here is being shown. Let's go. And David said to Etai, go and pass over. And Etai the Gittite passed over. And all his men and all the little ones that were with him. And all the country wept with a loud voice as all the people passed over. And as the king passed over the book he thrown, all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. And lo, Zadok also came, and all the Levites with him, bearing the ark of the covenant of God. And they set down the ark of God, but Abiathar went up until all the people had done passing out of the city. And the king said unto Zadok, Carry back the ark of God into the city. If I shall find favor in the eyes of Jehovah, he will bring me back and show me both it and his habitation. But if he say thus, I have no delight in thee. Behold, here am I. Let him do to me as he seemeth good unto him. As it seemeth good unto him. See, Zadok and the Levites came out. They understand that the anointed one and the ark belong together. Uh -huh. They are going to make sure the kingdom survives no matter where the anointed one is. That's right. And But he's thinking about the almighty God. He understands that he, by inspiration, was sent to conquer that city because the name of Jehovah will be written on that city forever. So he says, rather than bring the ark into danger with myself, take it back to its place. Take it back to its housing for the time being. That it be not in danger and that when the Most High finds me acceptable, I can return there and reign again. You see what happens here? You have to trust in the Almighty God. Yes, sir. There, there is nothing else. And he understands this, because either he wrote it or he caused other people to write this. If you please Jehovah, he will make even thine enemies to be at peace with thee. That's right. That's right. So he's not exalting himself at all. He's already called out Shalom the king, and he's going out there in humility. He feels he is under the judgment of heaven and he has to stand the trial, but never lose faith in his creator mm -hmm. and do what is pleasing, do what is good and right in the sight of God, and then he'll lift me back up. He'll do that to us also. That's how you vanquish your enemies, you know. That's how you vanquish what is called the evil disease trying to creep into your bones or get into 
into the brain cells or giving you heart disease or whatever. That's the enemy. Please this God and he will make even thine enemies be at peace with you. See, put the word inside you. Find a promise that says you're healed and, and <laughs> receive it. That's mine. <laughs> He told us coming out of Egypt, man, I will not even let the diseases of Egypt come upon me. All you got to do is love me. And I'll get rid of them. Hmm? Oh, baby, find the promise. Find the promise you need and receive it. This is mine. I've done it a couple times. <laughs> it works every time. Let's read some. Oh, well, Zadok came and the Levites. Thank God for the Levites, right? That's right. See? One Levite spoke up. Thank God for the Levites. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Forsake them not. They brought out the ark. Talk that talk. <laughs> oh, man. And he sent them back. Mm -hmm. See, not any old local dude can be handling the ark. That's right. He learned that lesson. So they removed and went back. How? In obedience to him. But everybody got to play the game now. When you get around Absalom, well, he's the anointing. Amen. That's it. Hey, love you, baby. You be the man. All right, so carry back the ark of God into the city. If I find favor in the eyes of Jehovah, he will bring me back. Let's read verse 27. The king said, also unto says, I the priest, see his style. Return into the city in peace, and your two sons with you. I keep my eyes, thy son, and your honor time, the son of Abiathar. See, I will tell you in the plains of the wilderness until there come word from you to announce unto me. Zadok therefore and Abiathar carried the ark of God back to Jerusalem, and they abode there. They abode there. He's already devising a plan to keep in touch with what's going on in town. He has to be away from there. This warrior didn't go to sleep because he's under pressure. You don't, you don't just give up. I know we, I, I certainly like that uh, old saying, let go and let God, but don't let God do everything. No, no, no. <laughs> My Ema used to say, God help them who help themselves, boy. Huh? You feel me? <laughs> she was saying that before that was popular. <laughs> yeah, listen, he helps them who help themselves. What does that mean? You make your prayers to the eternal. You put your spirit, soul, and body in his care. And then you do natural things to help it along. Didn't y'all go do that? After he wrestled with the angel, then he got all of that stuff up for of him. Then he went and set the, the uh, family in order in case the attack comes. He did things. He makes something happen. You don't just lay around saying, the Lord knows and I'll, I'll be all right. He's marching toward the wilderness, but he's getting his spies in place. Let's read. And David went up by the ascent of the Mount of Olives. And what as he went up? And he had his head covered and went barefoot. And all the people that were with him covered every man in his head. And they went up, weeping as they went up. And one told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O oh, Yehovah, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. <laughs> and it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the ascent, where God was wont to be worshipped, behold, Hushai the archite came to meet him with his coat ring and earth upon his head. Right there. Now he went up by the ascent to the Mount of Olives, or of the Mount of Olives, and wept as he went up. There's nothing wrong with giving vent to the pain. Sometimes it is a very, very cleansing experience. Just let it go. And he's looking at the ways that he had disappointed his maker. He's looking at the ways he had let this boy run wild with his foolishness, and he still loved him so much. And he's weeping. He's weeping and, uh, well, he had his head covering and went barefoot. This is like a, a, a testimony of his humility before God. He is not thinking of himself more important than he is. There's a lesson in that. 
Don't think you are so important or more important than you actually are. Yeah, right. Yeah, man, there's a trap there. Sure enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you get tripped up by that trap, it's going to hurt. And, and uh, oh, Hushai, the archite, came to meet him. Now, this ascent where God was wont to be worshipped was a high place. See, the high place was, you know, the uh, human condition is this. The higher you get up, the closer you are to God. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's not true, but that's the way it was. Uh -huh. This is before the temple was built, uh -huh. and the high place was not always used for the filth that became known for later. Right. It became known for disgusting rites of uh, worship of the peoples around about us. Mm, that's right. But here, he came to the place where people used to go to lift up their prayers. And that's why he went up in such a way of humility. You should uh, pray every day. Everybody does pray every day here, right? Yeah. Please don't stop. Don't, don't stop. Begin your day. End your day in prayer. One brother told me, he said, man, stop in the middle of the day and read prayers and psalms. So you have three times before God each day and see what happens. That's a powerful experience, too. Yeah. Well, anyway, David went up in this uh, attitude or this character of worship because he has got to make the almighty God know that he is what humbling and placing himself in the care of the king of the world. Let's go. And David said unto him, If thou passest on with me, then thou wilt be a burden unto me. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant in time past, so will I now be thy servant, then will thou defeat for me the counsel of Ahithophel. Ahithophel. He's known as the wisest counselor there is. You know, and he, this guy's got a rep in and out of the nation, in and out of the community. That's why David made this prayer. Let the counsel of Ahithophel be made into foolishness. That's right. Don't let what he tells my son amount to anything. Because Absalom will know this guy the baddest dude there is. If I ask him for a word, he'll give me something that will make me master over my Abba and keep me in the place of ruling all Israel. All right. So now David is making sure that he has somebody right near to Ahithophel. I'm telling you, he doesn't stop thinking because he's in trouble. That's right. Mm -hmm. Don't stop thinking because you hurt and you're in trouble. So That's right. I mean, let, God gave you the most powerful instrument known to man. And it is not made by Apple. <laughs> Went right over there, man. <laughs> it is not right. It's not <laughs> the man-made computer, that brain that made the computer, that's the thing. The mind is the most powerful instrument in this whole universe. If God gave it the power to reason like he does, and to decipher and to um, solve problems, and create and discernment, all of those great things are going on there. And if you keep it clean and clear, put pure water into it, into the brain, which is the, uh, well, that's the seat of where most of that thinking is happening, mm -hmm. you will always be able to call upon it and be successful in it, in whatever you need it for. And right now, he's working out some things. He says, go and Pass on, no, if thou pass on with me, then thou will be a burden unto me. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant in time past, so will I now be thy servant. He said, that ambitious little monster will fall for this in a minute. I got his number. Just go tell him you're betraying me. You got him. 
strategy. Now you'll be in where I need you. All right, let's read. And hast thou not there with thee Zadok and Abiathar the priest? Therefore it shall be. Now what thing soever thou shalt hear out of the king's house, thou shalt tell it to Zadok and Abiathar the priest. You know, they had there with them their two sons, Akimaah, Zadok's son, and Yohanan, Abiathar's son. And by them ye shall send unto me everything that ye shall hear. So Cushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom was at the point of coming into Jerusalem. See? So remember, he sends Zadok and uh, Abiathar back, and he mentioned their two sons. Get them ready. They're going to be the messengers. They're going to be the runners. All right. And so he went back and did as his friend David told him. Let's read some. Chapter 16. And when David was a little past the top, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of asses saddled. And upon them two hundred loaves of bread, and a hundred clusters of raisins, and a hundred of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. I like this guy. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> He said, I'm going hey, to bring you something that's going to be a comfort in your straits and in your stress. You see, when, when you come to serve, bring that which is helpful, which is nourishing you, which is comforting. And he brings out a big supply. Yes. When he was a little past the top, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of asses, saddled and upon them two hundred loaves of bread, and a hundred clusters of raisins, and a hundred of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. Okay, let your mind expand a little bit. This is not a bottle of wine. <laughs> this is a cow skin. <laughs> this is a skin of wine, man. <laughs> Enough to get us all stoned till next Passover. <laughs> That'd be nice too, man. And I'll tell you something, raisins are no joke. You feel weak, just eat a handful of raisins. Your eyes brighten up. Man, there's iron and uh, several minerals and vitamins in there. So what he is doing is giving them the strength to continue their journey. And this is the same one who he placed in the service of Mephibosheth. Oh, no, no, this is not that one, is it? Well, anyway, Ziba came and did a good thing. Now, let's read some. And the king said unto Ziba, What meanest thou by these? And Ziba said, The asses are for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine, that such as are faint in the wilderness, may drink. And the king said, and where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abided at Jerusalem. For he said, Today will the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thou is all that pertaineth unto Mephibosheth. And Ziba said, I prostrate myself. Let me find favor in thy sight, my lord, O king. My lord, O king. See? Now this here, Mephibosheth, he sounds like the traitor, does he not? You know, that, that's the uh, that's the fair weather friend. That's me sometimes. If you win it, I love you. <laughs> I'm serious. I love you, baby. I, hey, if you're losing, hey, get me behind me. <laughs> Usually I do that with baseball. <laughs> the Yankees are winning. Hey, hey. The Mets are losing. What a bunch of bums. <laughs> <laughs> the Mets are in the playoffs. I love those guys. <laughs> Talk to me. <laughs> That's Mephibosheth. David sent him in a good place. But now he thinks Absalom is back in. Maybe everything will be restored to me. Oh, well, anyway, it's a custom. Yeah. He picked the wrong horse. <laughs> I'm telling you, he picked the wrong horse. Not just because I know the end of the matter, but there is something good to say about loyalty. Yeah. Yeah. Be determined. Don't be like me. 
I, I dump the, the losing team all the time. But when it comes to this way of life, no matter what we're going through, I'm staying with this. Stay with the Almighty God. It's the way of life. Yeah, try reading the Egyptian Book of the Dead and see if I'm not telling you the truth. Let's read some. Five. And when King David came to Bakurim, behold, there came out thence a man of the family of the house of Shaul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gad. He came out and kept on cursing as he came. Wow. And he cast stones at David. Wow. And at all the servants of King David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei when he cursed. Be gone, be gone, thou man of blood and base fellow. Your whole hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Shaul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And your whole hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Ashton, on thy son. Mm -hmm. And behold, thou art taken in thy own mischief, because thou art a man of blood. Wow. You know, his end is not going to be good. Oh, <laughs> big that. My goodness. See, cursing is not good. Especially cursing the Lord's anointing. I read in this great book of God somewhere that it says don't even what? Don't 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 even curse at the rulers of thy people. The people who have sway. Leaders and teachers and parents. And we're not talking profanity here. You, That's right. This That's is right. not, you know, you, you That's right. dirty son of a something. Da, 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 da. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. He's cursing him that he might die violently <laughs> with vicious, virulent diseases or by the sword of his son being driven through his body, his body desecrated and him being remembered for blood and evil all the days of history to come, whatever he said, it was filthy. And he was spitting at him, throwing stones at him, and he had to be a nutcase. Because the mighty men were there, the cherubites, they want to fall on him. They want to fall on him and put this dead dog to death. Right? But there is something else going on. Let's read. Then said Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah? <laughs> so let him curse, because Jehovah has said unto him, Curse David. Who then shall say, Wherefore hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, who came forth of my body, seeketh my life. How much more of this Benjamite now? Mm. Let him alone, and let him curse, for Jehovah hath bidden him. That's right. Now we're saying the same thing again that we spoke a little earlier. The Most High allowed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's allowing this trial to be deep and heavy upon him. Will you break? Will you break? No, I'm not going to break. I'm not going to put this clown to death. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let anyone soil his sword on his blood because I am in the low case now. And I'm going to trust in my maker. Amen. Please learn that. The more that we are exalted, the more we must humble ourselves. He was at the top of the world. He has now gone down to where you can go no lower. You can't go, you can't go any lower than this. I am not going to struggle. I'm going to keep my wits about me. I'm not going to shed blood. I'm going to wait on the Lord, do that which is good and right in his sight, and he bring me back. Uh -huh. Here's something about this. It would have been right for him to put this to death, but it was not good and right. Mm -hmm. It would have been right. He's cursing the anointed of God. That is not just a word. That oil that was poured upon his head by Shemuel, it said another spirit came upon him from that day forward. He was empowered by heaven, just like Aharon was empowered. Right. It was the same mixture, the same oil that Moses had made. 
that no other human being can make again. It was only made once. They didn't start mass producing this stuff. It was once. And when that was poured upon him, he became a whole new human being. That's right. <laughs> you ever see Superman in the movies? Superman was devised by two Jewish boys out That's in Chicago. Right. That's right. right? I don't know, 75 years ago or something like that. <laughs> yeah, where do you think they got that? In the 18th, uh, 18th Psalm, David writes about how he licked over walls. When we first saw Superman, it was in comic strip in, in the newspaper back in the 1940s when I could first look at pictures. And it said, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. You know? So that anointing oil made him a super kind of human being. He ran down his enemies. He describes it. He said he, he crushed them under his feet. He bent steel. He turned back a bow, you know, with his bare hands, etc. Et okay. Well. He did that was good and right. Let him live. He's not going to make these kinds of decisions of bloodletting right yet. Let's go. Twelve. It may be that Jehovah will look on my eye and that Jehovah will requite me good for his person of me this day. You hear? You see that? All right. Let's read. So David and his men went up by the way, and Shimei went along on the hillside over against him and cursed as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. And the king and all the people that were with him came weary, and he refreshed himself dead. Mm -hmm. And Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and the hitter fell with him. And it came to pass when Cushai the archite, David's friend, was coming to Absalom, that Cushai said unto Absalom, Long live the king, long live the king. And Absalom said to Cushai, Is this thy kindness to thy friend? Why wouldst thou not with thy friend? And Hushai said unto Absalom, Nay, for whom Jehovah and this people and all the men of Israel have chosen, his will I be, and with him will I abide. And again, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son, as I have served in thy father's presence? So will I be in thy presence. He put his own spin on it, and it worked, right? Sure it did. It worked. You know, you want to hear what you want to hear. I know this guy was cool with my Abba. What's up? Man, you have been chosen by God and the people. You feel me? <laughs> Come on, man. I'm, I'm right with you. He's out there. We in here. I will serve you. I will be yours. And I will serve in thy presence, or in the presence of his son. As I have served in thy father's presence, so will I be in thy presence. And then said Absalom to Ahithophel, Give your counsel what we shall do. And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubines, that he hath left to keep the house, and all Israel will hear that thou art abhorred of thy father. Then with the hands of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom the tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. You getting this? Come on. Now the, now the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man inquired of the word of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. Wow. All right. We must now remember something that the Almighty said to David in the matter of Uriah and his wife. Yeah. He told him, what thou hast done in the dark, I will do unto thee in the light of the sun. So the Most High speaks it and he brings it to pass. All these things must come to pass. You know, once once all of the violence has been done against Dawid and, and he's purified by the, the fire, the fire of the proving fire, and he will be stronger, and he will come back. But listen, the one who dishonored him is worthy of what? First, he stole from him. 
the hearts of the people. Then he comes and he goes into his concubines, one by one. Oh my goodness, I gotta read this again. <laughs> then said Absalom to Ahithophel, the guy with the counsel, give your counsel what we shall do. And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, go in unto thy father's concubines that he hath left to keep the house and all Israel will hear that thou art a whore of thy father, then will the hands of all that are with thee be strong. Listen, I knew, I knew, listen, I knew some Israelites just like this. Gosh. <laughs> If they want to break your spirit, they, they, yeah. Yeah, they hit your baby girl. That's it. And I have power over you, young Israelite punk. That's right. There were some guys that you did not have a feast for her. She's open season. And you were always beholden to him like he was, he was up over you. You know. Yeah, what's up? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's some unbelievable stuff. This here man, what he did was show hatred to his father and that I, I done banged his broads, you see? He nothing to me. I have gone, and look how he did it. <laughs> so they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went into his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. That's daylight. Put up a pavilion, open so it can be seen. Put a meter there, spread her legs, defile her, get her off of here, next defile her, get her out of here, next, 10 times. To so everybody watching who are in an evil state of mind like him, now that's the man. His father ain't nothing now. He can never come back here. He said, Ahithophel said, they'll feel strong, the ones who backed him. But what he has done is, he has put himself in the death cycle. Yeah. What does it say? Yeah. <laughs> Honor thy father and thy mother. What? That thy days may be long. Almost. What's the opposite of long? Short. Your days will be shortened. So, David's prayer. Make Ahithophel's counsel come to foolishness. And that's what it is. Oh, yeah. You done killed yourself, homie. Uh -huh. Taking that counsel. Yeah. That's it. What he thought was a big time move, a political uh, power brokering, or whatever you might call it, became his death knell. Because somebody who's a little bit worse than him is going to put him out of his misery. <laughs> Can't wait to get to that part. Uh oh Okay, I know it's a lot of cloud cover outside, so it ain't all the way down yet. What is it? How's the sun shining? Anybody know what time the sun go down? Hmm? People in the back are saying, it's down, it's down. It's down. She can get in this town. <laughs> okay. About 8.05. About 8.05? About 8.40? Not that late, is it? No. Okay, we're at the end of the 16th chapter. Mm -hmm. Now the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was it if a man inquired of the word of God. Imagine the word of God telling you 
to defile your other's bed. Sleep naked in his woman folk. Cover your, cover your father's nakedness. Hmm. You see, so the one who is pretending to the throne, he don't know no Torah. And if he does know, he don't care. He's yeah. He is a miserable cuss. And everybody concerned in this overthrow of David the king are going to be on the wrong side of the wrath of God. Because he's going to stand that purging and that burning, you know, of privation and misery that is going to prove him harder and stronger than he ever was. And then he comes back with the power of God behind him. All right? So, I want to thank the Almighty God for this time to stand in the midst of the congregation of the Lord and. Thank God that Chief Uziel is now in his 37th year and the sun is going down. 37th year, wow, amen. And I greet everyone. Oh, my girl, Elena, last week didn't hear my shout out. God bless you and your cycle around the sun, darling. And may he keep you safe and strong, filled with his Holy Spirit forever. Shabbat Shalom, Shalom Aleichem. Shabbat Shalom, 